All right, guys, we're going to get back to work tonight. End of the month is right around the corner. It's Tuesday evening. It's June 29th, 2021. My name is Joseph, and as always, welcome back to your nightly newsletter. And if you're watching for the first time tonight, it's great to have you with me because my job tonight is to help us find the best trades for tomorrow, not just any Wednesday, the last Wednesday of the month of June. Boy, oh boy, this month just flew right by, didn't it? we got a great video in store for you guys tonight. Charts are already in the background, as you can see. S&P's ready. NASDAQ's ready. Gold is ready. Boy, I got a busy video newsletter for you guys tonight. Uh, the E-minis, of course, continue their record-breaking run, a, a fourth day of record-breaking highs here on the S&P and the NASDAQ. But I got to say, though, looking at the charts right now, I would love to I would love to grab some reversals personally, right? Uh, NASDAQ's had some big levels of resistance we talked about last night. S&P has this very interesting kind of tail of two ranges. So I, I'll tell you, I'd love to short the S&P, would love to short the NASDAQ for tomorrow. Again, we're still very bullish, so I got to time my entries properly. But I'll make sure to, to give you guys all the ammunition you guys need to capitalize on those reversals if we get them tomorrow. And boy, oh boy, what a big deal day on the gold today we talked about this last night right how if there was one if there was one market ripe for a breakout it was it was gold well they got their breakout today got some short trades on the gold i'm watching for tonight but you know the, the big problem we have right now is that big bounce off of that low so we're gonna we're gonna cover all the bases on the gold definitely have some short trades on my radar uh to retest those lows and potentially make one more big lower uh one more big leg lower on the yellow metal now before we jump in and get this video going as always i want to make sure to encourage you remind you to subscribe to our youtube channel i published this video new newsletter with my best trade ideas for the following day. I publish this every day during the week. I don't want you to miss tomorrow night's video, so make sure, you, make sure you subscribe to our channel. If you guys have any questions for me tonight, drop those questions in the comments section. And as always, if you enjoy this video, if you like this video as much as I enjoy making it for you guys, I appreciate the love. Hit that like button, that thumbs up here on this video. Greatly appreciate you guys tuning in. But again, make sure you subscribe. Right, drop those questions if you got them. And Hit that like button if you guys enjoy the content here tonight on this YouTube channel. But enough of the intro. Let's get this video going. Time is ticking. Is it crazy? The end of the end of the month of June is right around the corner. We got the Fourth of July holiday weekend coming up this weekend, and and man, oh man, it's it's been a busy, busy month of June. So we're getting ready to wrap up what should be a very good day for tomorrow. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, you know the S and P and the Nasdaq are definitely on my radar right now. We're all bullish on the E minis. Right, there's there's no doubt about that right now, but I'll tell you though the way this S and P is setting up right now, I've got some markers on here. Right, got a lot of clues on the S and P. I would love, I would love to drop this thing down. Right, complete some targets down around 42.68. You know, even if the market pops up, I would still love to grab those shorts off the highs. And you know, again, we'll talk about some bull breakouts. I, I can definitely see a really nice bull setup right now in the S and P. The question is whether or not we trust. It. And you'll see why I say that here in a moment once we jump into those charts here. NASDAQ, very bullish, right? Nice bullish run on the NASDAQ, but multiple levels of resistance up top here. We talked about this 14,585 level last night on the video. It's one of the biggest reasons why I'll be looking for this market to either go sideways tomorrow or, like I got to say, I would love to grab that reversal back down into that trading range. I'll talk about those entry setups here tonight on this video. And again, the gold, right? Big, big drop on the gold here. But they got that big bounce off the low. There's a rising support trend line. We have to be very careful trying to get short here right now on the gold. Uh, and honestly, too, I, I wouldn't mind going up a little bit further and getting the short right there, too. So would love to get short here. You know, all three of these markets have some great sell setups on our radar tomorrow. And you know me. I'll make sure to cover you both the long side and the short side. By the end of this video tonight, you'll know my favorite trades for tomorrow. You'll also know what stuff to avoid to stay out of trouble tomorrow, whether you're trading on your own or whether you're trading with us tomorrow morning and every morning in our trade room. Now, the charts are all ready to go. Before we jump into our charts, though, why don't we check the schedule for tomorrow? Because we've got some more big news on our radar here for the Wednesday trading session. Not only is it the end of the month, right? Don't forget, end of the month typically is a more volatile time of the month, right? We didn't really see much volatility today, but 
you could definitely feel the markets, right, as they start to wake up from their slumber early this morning. Hopefully, we'll see a shot in the arm for some volatility here tomorrow. End of the month, always expect to see, you know, get an uptick in volatility as traders close out positions, right, balance their portfolios to make their numbers look good as they go into the 1st of July. Now, we've got a lot to talk about in tomorrow night's video on how to trade that that first day of July because Friday is going to be a it's going to be kind of a half day on Friday. So, we'll talk about the plan for Thursday. Real quickly though here for tomorrow, right? We'll talk about we'll talk about Thursday in tomorrow night's video. Lots to cover here though this week here. Tomorrow morning, big news here, Chicago PMI and pending home sales numbers. Those are the big news reports here for tomorrow. We have continued to see some of the best trades in our trade room between that 9:45 and 10:45 block every morning right now so this fits right into that for tomorrow I wouldn't worry too much about the ADP employment report it does sound like it would be important it's not generally a market moving event it is used as a comparison tool for the employment number on Friday and again we'll talk more about how to get prepped up for non-farm payrolls in tomorrow night's video but again I wouldn't waste too much time on the employment report tomorrow morning uh, the Chicago PMI the purchasing managers index is all about inflation and of course the home sales number right the real estate market here at least in the u.s has been red hot ever since the pandemic began and so we'll be looking to see how those numbers come out tomorrow definitely be make sure you're at your desk tomorrow 9 45 10 45 that will likely be where the best opportunities are coming tomorrow in our trade room and speaking of which right speaking of our trade room don't forget we get together every day eight o'clock eastern time i would love to have you there trading right alongside me I'll, I'll put all the membership links you guys need the description of this youtube video i'll also put a big button for you guys in the blog here right below the video tonight on the blog so grab that link there get registered for tomorrow's trade room that way you don't have to go out there and do this on your own come do it with me i have all the cheat sheets all the checklists all the pattern setups everything's ready for you all i need is you so grab that link in the description and i'll see you tomorrow morning at the opening bell back to our charts we know what the schedule looks like for tomorrow we'll worry about new month of july in tomorrow night's video let's talk about the best trades for tomorrow s p nasdaq and gold boy i'll tell you all three of these markets have a different kind of flavor to them here as we go why don't we grab the s p first right always right always going to start off with the e-mini the most liquid right of all the markets here tonight the s p 500 let's unpack this right now what's the most important factor on the s p right now i, I think there's a there's, there's a there's a lot of layers to this analysis first of all we pretty much began the day today on the s p inside of a range right and of course we know that ranges act like magnets well sometimes those ranges they break out and they turn into new ranges right and you see what happened the market broke out right into a basically another range and typically typically when you see a range that then breaks out into another range usually that new range is the new magnet right it's the new it's the yeah it, it's it's the it's the price magnet that you want to use we don't oftentimes end up going back into that prior range and you'll notice that's exactly what happened so now instead of at least in my eyes right now instead of this range overhead being the most important range which again usually it is because of recency now we look at this more as a trading range with a breakout and potentially now a pendulum swing all the way back in the opposite direction right so that's what this range is telling me right now well in all reality it's not this range that's telling me that it's this range right it's the lack of the ability for these buyers to stick in that new trading range that's one one layer of this analysis another piece of this puzzle which i think is a dead giveaway is you'll notice as the market rolls higher here, if you draw a trend line off of this high, bring it down to that low, this is a great spot for the bulls to get long, right? I mean, if you're with me in the trade room, how many times do we find great entries, right, coming off the low of these types of channels? Look what happened though here, right? Look what happened. Not only did the buyers not even really try, right? 
the buyers didn't really even try. They didn't even hold the candle above the moving average, for crying out. But look closer, though. Look what happens. The market slips below the trend line, right? And look at the bears coming in and making them pay, using that support line now as a resistance. Usually, this means we're done. Usually, that means game over for these buyers, right? We call these a one, two, three reversal. So, this really puts the, again, the momentum now on the side of those bears, right? So, whether you want to call the range rotation the big clue or you want to call this Again, the sellers just shoving it right in their faces right there and running it lower off that, that really does create, it creates a very difficult environment to get long because now the bears have their strong move down. That leaves an open loop wide open and the sellers should be trying to not only retest that, that interim low, but again, get the amount above the range, the amount below the range and, and take out that pendulum swing on the opposite side. Now, as I mentioned in the introduction, there is a really nice buy setup happening right now. Uh, if I was, if if we didn't have this big push lower, right? If if that big push lower never happened, and this market had pulled back, and, and notice what happened, right? The bears tried once, the bears tried twice, right? So this is a this is a pretty good, it's a pretty good buy setup, right, for the bulls. What I want to do on this is, if kind of kind of my my favorite trade here for tomorrow is if I was a buyer, if I if I if I hadn't if I if I hadn't bought that first pullback, if I was a buyer right now, I'd be looking for a trap right below that low. And ideally, right, get it right off that trend line coming down, right? Like that's a that's a really nice buy setup. I like that price section setup. You basically have the bears trying twice. I realize it's actually two smaller tries inside of it and that long trade. So I think there's a great opportunity now for the sellers to basically anticipate those buyers coming in because it, at first glance, it does look like great spot to get long right there. Uh, but again, what we've talked about already, it's difficult to justify it. So if I had it my way, I'd like to get these buyers to come in, try to get long, and then use those stop losses to sell right into those stops on a failure setup. That's kind of my that, that's kind of my favorite trade for tomorrow. Now we could do this a couple different ways, right? We could definitely do this a few different ways. My favorite entry would be that trap below that low, get that get those buyers coming in. Stops now are right below those lows here, right? Stops are right below those lows and I can sell into those stop losses. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it is I can wait for the pullback. Let's say, for example, we don't get that. Let's say, for example, we don't get that long right signal and we don't get me to sell into it. If the market rolls lower, one, two, a trap entry would be another follow-up entry. Right? Makes sense? I just don't want to sell too low, right? I'm going to sell right into that low. So a trap would be great. Now, if it goes even lower, right? Let's say it takes off the downside here. Same thing, right? Traps, right? Traps are going to be your bread and butter as we go lower, right? So you can see what I'm doing, right? I'm trying to catch those, in this case, buyers on the on the potentially the wrong side of the market. Those are some great setups we're tracking here for uh, tomorrow. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we can we can sell this market as the market goes higher here as well. Let's kind of play that. Let's let's, let's let's play that game up, down, sideways, right? First of all, major high, right? Major high overhead. If we go higher here, take out that high. Now, if we take out those highs, the buyers have earned my trust again. And so to get short on this, I'd have to wait for the buyers trying once, buyers trying twice, their stops are sitting right below that low, and now I can sell short with a failure setup, right, off of, off of that high, right? So take out that high, take out that high, range still acts as a magnet, I can wait for the buyers to try. Again, because if they retest the high, that renews that renews the, the energy of the buyers. In my eyes, it earns our respect. It really does, right? So you want to let those buyers try a few times, hit those stops, right, and short that sucker back down again. That is one another way I can get short off of these highs. How do we buy this market, though, as we're going higher? 
What would be a good way to buy this? Well, first of all, you got to think about where we are. If the market goes higher here, if the market goes higher here, where would the buyers be trying to go? They're trying to get a pendulum swing, right? They're trying to get up to that area right there, 97 a quarter, let's call it, right? That's where the buyers want to get to. Remember, ranges are balanced areas. So the amount that goes below is the amount that goes above. If the market goes higher here and really races higher, I can break out one of my favorite trades here, which is those two try traps. Strong move up, shallow pullback, higher high in price, to try trap. You're going to see an example of this in the NASDAQ here in a moment. NASDAQ had one of these beauties this afternoon. And you'll see what these look like on the NQ. So if we do make that run higher, right, keep your eyes open for traps as we try to take out that pendulum swing. Now, we do have that 4,300 and even more importantly, that 4,305 level overhead, right? Those are kind of runaway targets for tomorrow, but that that 49 or 4297 level and a quarter there, definitely on our radar, right, for that, for that target. And don't be afraid too, we may see this market run higher, get that, right, get that two try trap, take out that pendulum swing, right? Take out that pendulum swing, and then we might get that, we, we, we might see the failure again, right? The one try, the two try, and back down again. There's no reason why we can't trade a strength move with a trap entry on the way up to the pendulum swing. And then again, the range is still there, right? The range is still there. Then we wait for the buyers to try twice, and we get short, right, into those stop losses. Now, at this point, at this point, I'm sure a lot of you guys that are brand new to the channel right now are over, overloaded with terminology right now. Traps and failures and rotation and pendulum swing. Let me back up here for a second. If all this stuff is, is brand new to you here right now, you got to take our quick start trading class here at School of Trade. What I'll do is I'll put a little link up there for you right for that quick start class it's a great shortcut class that'll bring you right up to speed with the right charts the right indicators uh how to how to how to find ranges and channels and most importantly you'll learn my favorite price action entry setups like failures like traps like strength moves i'm talking about here uh in this video so if you haven't done so already if you're if you're new to trading definitely grab that little quick start class it's a shortcut to be trading right along with us like we trade every day in our trade room you're gonna love that, uh, that 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 free video class up there so now we kind of know how to trade this thing right as it as it's going higher and there are some other options to trade as it goes higher here we'll cover more of that as we get deeper into this video what if we end up dropping here right again if we end up dropping my favorite trade right is wait for that trap okay wait for that trap and then literally trap the trappers right trap the trappers once those trappers get in their stops are right below that low and we can get short right into those stop losses as we go or maybe we simply grind lower watch those traps as we go this will this will probably really pick up steam if the market starts to roll over because all the buyers will realize they're caught on the wrong side, right? So trap entries would be a great way to trade this as we're going lower. Another option would be we, we take out that low, we hold the pullback, right? We jump off the moving average. Again, we saw one of these earlier, right? We call those one, two, three breakout moves, one, two, three breakouts. Once we see those one, two, three breakout moves, we mark up that high. High, sorry, that low, mark up that high, and we'll drill down for an entry on a faster time frame. Keep in mind, right, this is a 5,000 tick chart on the S&P 500. What I'll do is I'll drill down to like a 1,000 tick, right, a lot faster time frame, and I'll find the price action entry. Remember, we don't use indicators to trigger entries. They are they're lagging. All indicators are too lagging. By the time you get in on your MACD cross or RSI divergent signal, price action traders have already usually taken their first target. So skip the indicator signals, the moving average crosses, learn those price action setups I teach in the quick start class. You'll be ahead of the game instead of being late to the party all the time. So never trust the indicators. Again, we're going to wait for that one, two, three breakdown, right? And then hit them off the top of that, of that channel, looking for that target 
again, down at that pendulum swing. And remember, guys, this range doesn't disappear. So if we roll lower, take out that pendulum swing, uh, like on gold today, right? Gold made that big drop down, and the, you'll, you'll see in a second, what happens is the bears try once, the bears try twice, right? They're roped in now. All their stops are sitting right above those highs, and we can punch it right back up into that range again, right? Another failure set up off of that low. We can easily short this thing, right? Traps, one, two, three reversals. We can easily short this thing going lower. Once we take out that pendulum swing, stay patient. Don't pick the bottom, right? Don't pick the bottom, but wait for those bears to wrap that rope around their neck. Let them dig their own grave and hit them going right back up into that trading range. Now, we may end up seeing this thing collapse, and keep grinding, keep grinding, and go lower here with a spike in channel. If that happens, what do you do? You wait for those deep pullbacks, you find traps, you find failures into pullback combinations. This is very, very common where you see these big rotations off the high. They turn into these very tight little narrow spike in channels. Don't chase after those. Wait for that pop. Get above a prior swing. Use a trap entry. Use a failure entry. Use a pullback entry. Again, I'm not going to go over all those small details here. I'll cover all that stuff in that quick start class, right? That shortcut class in the upper right-hand corner. Really excited for, it, for, our, for our day here tomorrow. The buyers are not, they're not done, right? Because obviously the market's been very bullish lately and this could easily rip higher again. So I'm definitely not, I'm definitely not out of the game to be a buyer right now, but I've got to see some proof here because right now the bears have made a very convincing argument for this reversal. Let's keep going here. S&P would love the short, but I will grab the long if necessary here tomorrow. How about some NASDAQ? Now I mentioned NASDAQ, right? Had this cherry two try trap on it. Had that strong run up, shallow pullback, higher high in price, right? Look at how beautiful that trap was here this afternoon, right? Shortly after that breakout. This is the stuff, that is the pattern you're looking for on the S&P, right? That is, that is the breakout pattern you want to be looking for on the S&P tomorrow. So if we get that big run higher, that is the breakout pattern that you want to be looking for to make sure you're not buying too high. All right, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Over on the NASDAQ, the NQ, uh, what's going on? Boy, four days in a row now of record-breaking highs here. Uh, what's the key takeaway right now? The I think one of the biggest takeaways on this NASDAQ is it's a big move today, right? Another big move. Anytime we see a big move today, oftentimes the following day is a range, right? Now, if you remember, we had a big move yesterday. And remember what happened this morning? Range-bound market at the beginning. It wasn't until this afternoon the market kind of grew some legs and got a breakout. So don't be surprised tomorrow if with this big move today, we see something similar tomorrow morning, right? So don't force it, right, if we start going sideways. That is one big, I, I think, a big key takeaway uh, from this chart here today. And again, if you look at what happened yesterday and how the day began this morning on the NQ, you can see that's exactly what you would anticipate right here for tomorrow. The day began in a range. The day began in a range, right? You can see that big range up there. Then we get that strong breakout, right? I take the size of the breakout leg. I measure that to give me now my measured move, okay? That gives me major resistance up overhead. Now, 14,585 is a major level we talked about last night, right? We talked about this being a target for the buyers here today. So we're right up. It's obviously bullish. There's no doubt about the bulls being controlled right now. This is not the S&P. The S&P had that big shot lower, which gives the bears a way of really grabbing this thing. This is not the S&P. The NASDAQ is firmly in the hands of the bulls. However, it is definitely running into some turbulence here. What will likely be some considered some major resistance here overhead. Now we do still have some more levels overhead here, right? Sixteen two seven, sorry, uh, six two seven, six four three level. So we may see this thing continue to push higher here. But right now, in this location, with this big range underneath me and up at a level of resistance, I mean the risk reward ratio is all about the reversal. Right. If I can get and again, keep in mind, I, I'm not saying it's time to get short on this. I'm just saying looking at this chart, 
knowing that we're running into major resistance. There's a magnet range all the way down below us. And of course, right, that tells me if I can find a way to get the reversal here, I can risk small to earn large, right? That is a very nice, attractive risk reward ratio on this. Now, I can't just trade based on risk reward, right? I can't just get short because it looks like we've gone too far and there's a big, you know, target below. That's not enough reasons to get short. So I do have to wait for exhaustion from these buyers, but I'm hoping we'll see some of that start to develop here in the overnight Asian into London session. So buyers will be looking for a pullback. I would like to trap those buyers in and see if I can't sell right into their stop losses, right? So first of all, how do we trade? How do we trade the move higher, right? What if the market keeps going higher here? A couple ways you can do this. One way to sell it as it goes higher here, because again, I would expect this to most likely overnight try to push into that 14,600. If we can get up into that measured move, right? Take out that, you know, again, take out that measured move, then. I would anticipate buyers to try a couple times. Try once, try twice. Now, once those buyers try twice, you'll notice I'm drawing them off the low of this channel. I'd really like to get those buyers committing off the low of that channel. Once those buyers try twice up here, okay, now we know all the bulls are in. There are two ways I can short this. One, I can drop my sell order right below that low because now all the buyers are in right? The aggressive buyers are in, the very patient conservative buyers, they're in as well. The trap buyers are in. So now there's nobody left to save them, right? At this point now, if this thing fails, it'll probably collapse. Next up, I can draw a trend line off of that high and I can short off that trend line. That's always my favorite. If you can get that trend line short, that's the one you want because you're selling at resistance, right? It's a much more reliable entry and the buyers aren't gonna be buying up there, right? So it's a really, it's a very attractive entry there. If you really get lucky, it'll go just above that prior high for a trap entry, right? Not a double top though, okay? Not a double top. We don't want the double top, okay? The, remember the double top, the double top resets everything. Right. So, for example, if it was to pull back and double top, okay, that resets the counting, as we say. Then you want to go one. You want to go two. Again, right. Same, same basic idea. Right. Selling the stops from there. Okay. So think about that. As we go higher, buyers try once. Buyers try twice. Again, we know where those stops are. We know where that trend line is. Can I get my short? Get that short off the trend line. That'd be great short into those stop losses. And then because there's so much open space below us, what I can do is I can grab a trend line off that new low. I can grab a channel off that trend line. I can drill down to a faster time from, of course, because again, this is a, a 4,000 tick chart. I'll drill down to like an 800 tick chart right in the trade room tomorrow morning. And we'll drill down and find that entry short. Again, one of our four price action setups, right? We'll, we'll grab some traps, grab some failures, some pullback combinations. Remember, you're gonna learn all the price action setups. You'll learn how to find the channels. You'll learn how to look for the one try, the two try. I cover all of this stuff in that, right, in that quick start class that's linked up in the upper right-hand corner. So this is how I would like to trade that reversal here tomorrow, right? This will be how to reversal here tomorrow. And to be honest with you, this same kind of reversal, exhaustion into new channel sequence, this can be applied here right? There's no reason why it can't be applied there. So even if we go higher here, buyers want, right? Same, same thing, right? You can still keep applying that same technique at major areas of resistance, all right? Now, at the same time, right, as we as we go higher here, how do we buy this market? Because we definitely have a bull market, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's a bull market. How do we buy it as it goes higher? Well, you got to remember, we're at major resistance. So as we go higher here, I would definitely be keeping your eyes out for a strong move up, a shallow pullback that barely touches the moving average, and a trap low, right? If you're looking for an example of that pattern setup, it's right there, right? Strong move up, shallow pullback, drives the buyers crazy, higher high, confirms the move, and we get that trap low, right? That's a real, again, beautiful setup, okay? That same thing right there. So as we go higher, that's another great one. Now, sometimes what'll happen is, is the market will pull back to the moving average, right? The buyers will come in and jump off the moving average. 
Now, whenever we see those one, two, three breakouts, right, what does that do? It basically confirms, yes, the buyer is still of control, and they're looking for another, right, another target. That's basically what those one, two, three breakaway moves tell us, right? It tells us they're trying to get up to that 1627, 1630 area, uh, sorry, 630 area we talked about earlier. So what do we do? We mark up that high, we mark up that low, and of course, we're looking for that first pullback, right, off the low of that channel. And again, we'll drill down. This will be a bull trap, sorry, bear trap, right? It'll be a seller failure. We'll grab those failure into pullback combinations, right? As we come off the low of that channel. So imagine you're zoomed into the channel right there. Again, I'm just I'm just simply drawing the screen right now. I go over I go over all of that stuff, right? I go over all that stuff in the quick start class, right? So you'll see that stuff in the quick start, all right? But that's how I want to buy this thing, right? As it goes higher. Now, how do I buy it as it goes lower? Because that is a very good possibility. You'll notice here, let me readjust this, this channel off these highs here. That will probably fit the better there. Okay, now, got the channel adjusted here for the opening bell in Asia. How do we buy this thing now as it pulls back? As it pulls back, what's my problem? I really have two problems here. One is, I'm going to probably, is a, again, there's a good chance we see a range here. Okay, want to be careful on that. Second thing is the range below us. So you have to think, we get this pullback right now, you have to think the bears are going to be trying to short that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to respect that a lot. I have a lot of respect for the bears right now because of where we are, right? 14,585 is a big number. We talked about this already. So how do I buy this on a shallow pullback when I'm staring right in the face of major resistance? I let the bears try once, I let them try twice, and I go in with traps, right? Traps are going to be your best bet. Again, there's no question about who has control of this. There's no question about is that pullback area a great pullback area. The question is, is do I feel comfortable buying into that major, major turning point? Not when we have a big range like this to begin the day, right? Because this could easily hold and roll over. So this is the entry pattern. It gets a trap entry. We call these two try traps, right? Because the two tries and the trap low, the two tries respect the buy, respect the, buy, the, the the bears, and the trap gets me in at the lowest possible price, where I can effectively get in with a risk small, earn large opportunity to go back up to retest that high. Now, how do we how do we short this thing as it goes lower, right? What if it rolls lower here? If it rolls lower, and these bears now can grab that pullback and run, now it's game time, right? Now we know exactly where the market wants to go. Momentum now has turned with a one, two, three reversal, right? And now we can mark up that low, we can mark up that high, and we can get aggressive. This is the entry, this is the entry that you wanna go big on your best setups, right? That's always one of the rules we like to follow in our trade room. You know, go half size on marginal trades, but go big on your best setup that is a spot you do not want to miss the entry on and again we'll drill down to a faster time frame uh, and we'll look for usually their trap entries you know for example we may see it roll lower like this one of my favorite ways to trade these as the market rolls lower is to find a prior swing and again, I'm doing this in a slow time frame right now. This has been a faster time frame. Find that swing, right? There's your trap. There's your failure. There's your pullback, right? These are easy, easy ways to pile onto this position as we're running back down into that trading range, which is the magnet here. Now, we may also see this market really pull back strong, right? If it really pulls back strong, keep your eyes on the bears once, the bears twice, that same kind of idea, right? Again, if it really pulls back, it's underneath the battle zone here, right? We're not quite, we're not quite reversing yet, you know what I mean? We're no longer worried about buying high. This could be a tricky spot for you tomorrow. So remember, if we really pull back strong, you got to respect those bears. Let them once, let them twice. Again, can I buy off that trend line? That's the best one. Or do I buy into stops? At that point, I'm not so worried about buying high. I'm more worried about the momentum of the strength of that move. Right? Does that make sense, guys? Let me know in the comments section. Let me, let, let, let me know if you have any questions about this in the comments section because I want to make sure you guys understand that. Right? There's a point where we get the pullback. It holds and rolls over. That's a reversal. 
But sometimes the pullback happens very deep like that. It almost looks like a reversal, but until it holds the pullback and goes, it isn't a reversal yet, right? Mark the one, mark the two, draw that trend line, find those stops, and fire away, right? Fire away, going back up into that trading, or up back up, right, to retest those highs here. Now, I'm sure there's some variations of this that I didn't catch on to. I think the biggest kind of variable for tomorrow is, is will we go sideways up here, right? Last but not least, what if we go sideways up there? What do we do? We find levels of support below the range, right, like prior swings or triangles or trend lines. And what do we do? We combine that support level. We wait for the price to pull back. We wait for sellers to get short right? Going lower, those poor sellers, and we buy into stop losses. Why are we buying that right now? Because anytime we see a new range, what happens? That range is usually going to be the new magnet, right? Forget about this range. If we go sideways here overnight, we get that big range, right? We want to focus on buying underneath those ranges or buying those to try trap breakouts, right, that I love so much and we saw some great examples of today, right, on the NASDAQ. All right, guys, we'll cover more of the smaller details tomorrow morning in the trade room. And again, I cover all these price action entry setups. I cover those inside the quick start class. All right, let's keep going on the gold here. Now, we talked about last night, right? We talked about how the market was all coiled up, right, in that nasty range. And boy, oh boy, did that thing spit, right? It, it, definitely, it definitely spit. What a great example, though, of how you get that one, two, three breakdown. And what do you do? You mark up those lows. You mark up that high. Beautiful example of a buyer failure right off, right, right off of that high. So again, if you were watching last night's newsletter, right, if you if if you tuned in last night, you kind of knew we had potential. This thing may roll over. We knew that we knew a big breakout was possible. We didn't quite know what direction it was going to be, but we had a good idea there would be a possible breakout here coming very soon. We get that nice signal there going short. Now, very strong move down, right? Big, big, strong move down there on the gold. What's the key takeaway right now? I think one of the key takeaways, there are really, well, there are kind of three key takeaways. Well, I guess two. The, the big one is, is anytime we see a big move in one day, right? Anytime we see a big move in one day, usually that means the next day is a range, right? It's no guarantee. You know, sometimes you'll see back-to-back -back big moves, right? But it's just not very common. So big day today, right? Small day tomorrow. That will be kind of what you'd expect here, especially as we start getting closer to Friday's non-farm payroll report. Now, second big clue. The second big clue is, is we have a big, big down move. That leaves an open loop, right? What I call an open loop. There basically is unfinished business for these sellers, right? The sellers have this very strong move. Anytime we see a strong move in one direction, we know the odds are very good that at some point tomorrow, we retest that low, okay? That's another very big key takeaway on this. So big day today, potentially a range tomorrow, right? Big down move, strong in one direction, unfinished business to retest those lows tomorrow. The third kind of takeaway from this, the third layer on this is the buyer's bounce, right? Look at the strength of that bounce right now. That strong bounce up does the same thing for the buyers as it does for the sellers. So sellers have a strong move down. They're expecting a retest of that low at some point tomorrow, but the buyers are like, hey, we're, we're, we're here too. The buyers got their jump. And so they have that strong move and they're going to try for that next leg higher, right? Now, between you, me, and the wall, whenever I see two open loops in both directions, you'll notice most of the time when you see a strong move down and a strong move right back up, there's a range coming. There's a range coming. You know, it's not very common to see a strong move down just evaporate and go higher like that, right? And then a strong move up, evaporate and go back down. That usually leaves a range on there somewhere. So that's where I'm hunting for that trading range, right? I would expect, again, the range looks very likely here for tomorrow because of that big day today, right? Small day tomorrow, range bound day, right, tomorrow. So bears took it lower on strength, suggesting a retest the low, but the buyers also have strength on that recent pullback which tells the sellers to wait for the buyers to kind of try a couple times, right? We have to respect those buyers. Now, there's even one more wrinkle on this, and that is that rising support trend line. 
So not only do we have to respect the buyer's momentum right now, but we also have to be careful about selling short, right, into that trend line, right? So what would my favorite trade be for tomorrow? I think my favorite trade for tomorrow, let's talk about this, because you, you can see there's a, this is not the easiest of charts to trade here just because of all, all the stuff going on on this. What I think is the best possible solution for tomorrow is, is get a bounce back up into this area, 17, 17.70.4. Okay, that's the prior low of that of that range. Okay, so I, what, what I think probably is the best possible trade for tomorrow, if I extend this out, if we go higher, right, again, we have that strong move, we've got that strong jump up, let those buyers take it one more leg higher, right? Let the buyers have fun with this. But then off that level of resistance, we now look for exhaustion. The buyers try once, the buyers try twice. Again, stops are now sitting right below that low. Find that trend line off that high. I would really love it if we could see a trap above that high, right? Because that would really make our job easy. This reversal, this two try reversal off of the high, off a major area of resistance will help me avoid that rising support trend line. That would be my favorite trade going higher here for tomorrow. Now, at the same time, the market may blow right through this. You know, I mean, the gold's a market where easy come, easy go. So let's not forget, if this thing really jumps and runs higher here, what do we do? That's, that's a reversal, right? That is a one, two, three reversal. So if we can see this market kind of punch and really hold above that 1770.4, I can't mess with the short side anymore. My, my, the, the, the odds are not on my side anymore. Mark up that high, mark up that low, and I want that first pullback. Right, I want that first pullback. Again, this is a 1500 tick chart on the gold. I'll drill down to like a 377 tick chart. I'll look for a bear trap. I'll look for a seller failure. Failures oftentimes leading to pullback combinations. And again, I'm gonna go over all of that stuff, all these price action setups. I cover all those price action setups in our quick start class, right? That nice little shortcut class to bring you up to speed so you're ready to kick some butt with us in the trade room or on your own every day, however you choose to trade. So, would love to get that, uh, wouldn't mind the reversal, right? Wouldn't mind the reversal here. Where's my target? Right back up into that range, right? Right back up into that range here. What I would love to do though is get up, get that exhaustion going on and back down right into that range down below. The harder part here is going to be if we don't get that move higher. So for example, Let's say, for example, we take out that high and then we immediately now start pulling back. The buyers get what they want. Now we come in, the buyers try once, we go lower. See, now we're, yeah, now we have some trouble. So now traps are necessary, right? Now traps are absolutely necessary if we don't get that move higher here. Make sense, right? My concern is, is I want to, A, I want to respect the buyers, let them try twice. B, I want to respect that trend line, which is why that trap is so necessary, right? Now, we may, we may see something like this, where the market may not push higher. It may go just one, go two, trap back down. That is great too, right? That's a great entry as well. And keep in mind too, this could easily roll over and you could easily grab now, channel, channel, pull back and go right? It, it, that, that easily works as well, right? So again, it's a, it's a two-try failure. Again, you'll learn this terminology in the quick start class, right? A two-try failure. It rolls over with a one, two, three reversal. Now the buyers are gone, right? Now it's just a matter of getting in at resistance and we hit it again on a faster time frame. It's a bull trap. It's a buyer failure shorting off the top of that channel. If we really get lucky, grab that trend line right? If, if we really get lucky, that trend line, man, what a great entry that will be. All right. So that's some options here as we, as we go lower and let's face it, right? The market may just simply dump. It may take off the downside. Bears come in, hold it and run, grab that low, grab that high, right? Get that short off of that high because now you know where the bears want to go to, right? If we're rotating off the high of that range, there's a big bullseye now, right down to that 1744.6, right? One, two, three, okay? Don't worry about location. There's so much momentum right now, right? That short, it may not go forever, but it will likely get you at least your retest of that low, 
right? Take that stop, put the point of entry, lock in some profit, and see how far it'll run from there, right? So as we go higher, I'm looking for that short off the high. As we go higher, I'm looking for that breakout going higher. As we go lower, I'm looking for traps, right, to avoid that trend line. I'm looking at underneath the trend line, using it as a key area of, of resistance as we try to make that move going lower. The one thing you'll want to kind of keep an eye on here on the gold is if we do end up back into that range, we chop around for a while, right? If that happens, what do you do? The bears have momentum. You find levels of resistance up overhead. You wait to short. You don't just call the top. You wait for the pop. Wait for the buyers try to buy that pullback and short right into those stop losses, right? That's, that's what you want to look for tomorrow if we end up going sideways inside that trading range. All right, guys? Now, I'm sure I missed a couple things here and there on the gold tonight, but I think I've laid out a pretty good plan here uh, on the yellow metal. I am very curious about what to, what to expect here uh, overnight. Again, I could easily see this thing making one more leg higher and then setting up for a beautiful short right off the underbelly of that range, uh, you know, middle of the session tomorrow. I could also easily see this big drop today getting that big reversal tomorrow morning and we're simply looking for that new channel, right? And getting aggressive on those entries. So there's a lot of things that could definitely happen here overnight, but at least now we're ready for it and we get a pretty good plan of attack to capitalize on no matter what we get. All right, guys, don't forget tomorrow morning, eight o'clock Eastern time, we're gonna trade all this stuff together, right? It's a lot easier to do this correctly, avoid those mental mistakes, make sure you're following the rules, right? It's so much easier when you're doing it there with me every day in our trade room. What I'll do is I'll put all the membership information you guys need uh, right below this video, either on a button on our website, or of course, the description of this YouTube video, Grab that link, come out and join us every morning at the opening bell, 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Don't forget, you can always call me in the office if you have any questions. I've got live chat on the left, live support on the right. You can always drop questions in the comments section if you got them. And I hope by now you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to share this link with a friend because... This price action strategy works on all liquid markets, so don't be afraid to share. It's one of the best parts about trading is the well never runs dry, right? That's why I love to share this stuff with you guys every evening on this video. But that's it for tonight's, that's it for tonight's video, though, guys. I've taken up way too much of your time. Thank you for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed the video tonight. Hope you subscribe. Hope I'll see you tomorrow morning at the opening bell. Hit that like button before you finished up here tonight, and I'll see you guys either tomorrow morning at the opening bell or same time, same place in tomorrow night's video newsletter. My name is Joseph. As always, be well out there. Be nice to each other, will ya? And be here next time. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.